Welcome to St. Joseph's Episcopal Church, which is located on the north end of Salado in Texas. We're a little church, but we're mighty in everything that we do to benefit our parishioners and our community. If you are listening to these scriptures, thank you for being here. For the 20th Sunday after Pentecost, the Collect. Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job 23, lines 1 through 9 and 16 through 17. Job said, Today also my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy despite my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his dwelling. I would lay my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would learn what he would answer me and understand what he would say to me. Would he contend with me in the greatness of his power? No, but he would give heed to me. There an upright person could reason with him, and I should be acquitted forever by my judge. If I go forward, he is not there, or backward, I cannot perceive him. On the left, he hides, and I cannot behold him. I turn to the right, but I cannot see him. God has made my heart faint. The Almighty has terrified me. If only I could vanish in the darkness, the thick darkness would cover my face. The Word of the Lord. Psalm 22, lines 1 through 15. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress? Oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near and there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their jaws at me, like a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out, like a pot sherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. 
and you have laid me in the dust of the grave. A reading from Paul's letter to the Hebrews 4, lines 12 through 16. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark 10, lines 17 through 31. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals, it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother, or father, or children, or fields, for my sake, and for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children, and fields with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first 
will be last and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. As you already know, if you have been listening to me for a while, I am not a member of the clergy. I'm just a person who loves God and wants to enter heaven someday. My reflections do not represent St. Joseph's Church. These are simply my thoughts about the scriptures for today, October 10th. And thinking about today, don't forget that there will be a pet blessing at one o'clock in the church courtyard this coming Sunday, the 10th. We remember St. Francis of Assisi and show gratitude for our pets, who many of us believe are gifts from God. Well, Francis was probably contemplating in Mark 16, line 15, when the disciples were instructed to preach the gospel to all creation. At this point, Francis probably began to believe that such a command and the gospel itself was not for humanity alone. He found himself preaching one day to some birds he met on his path, telling them of the reasons we should be grateful for God, how God loves us without measure, and how Christ embodies this love in the redemption he offers. So, If you are in town this coming Sunday, the 10th, please stop by our church with your pet and receive a blessing. The Holy Gospel reminds us there are some rules that we need to follow. These go all the way back to Exodus 20, so they are nothing new or surprising. Considering that we have the opportunity to spend eternal life in heaven, well, why then are these commandments so difficult to follow? With the onslaught of so many seductions of the New Age spirituality, these ten rules should be utmost in our minds. In Dr. David Jeremiah's book titled Invasion of Other Gods, he reminds us that Christ has already defeated Satan at the cross. Satan's power is limited because God is in charge. Certainly with all that is happening in the world and at home, we have a lot of stress. There will be many temptations that call out to us, like the smell of cotton candy at county fairs or the hot dog and onion smells outside some of our local stores. If we remember those 10 rules, the commandments, we can stay focused, enter the gates of heaven. We can walk past all of these temptations. I usually remind everyone to keep praying But today I'm going to add one more suggestion. Read the word. Put positive thoughts in your mind because you aren't forsaken, even though sometimes it feels like that. As Paul says in his letter to the Hebrews, let us approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Well, God is here. God is always here. Trust, believe. Don't be misled by what you hear on the news, see in movies, overhear when shopping for groceries, or read online. As Kevin DeYoung from North Carolina says, The commandments are rules for a free people to stay free. So the question is, what is your plan? Only you can answer that. 
I want to thank you for joining with me today for the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. And I want to remind you that God loves you, and so do we. Until next time, be well.